You've got to stop just sketching and coloring with watercolor pencils because they can do a lot more, but you've got to know how to use them first and that's where most people fall short. Hi, I'm Françoise. Welcome, welcome back to my channel. Watercolor pencils come in a pencil form and of course the obvious thing to do is to color but what if I told you that there is another way to use them that is way faster, more fun, and easy? Meet your new best friend, a scrap piece of watercolor paper. It's great for beginners. Or meet my best friend, this special plastic palette by Kahandash. Well worth it when you use watercolor pencils a lot. So you can use one or the other with the same results and for it to work, you will also need some watercolor paintbrushes, one water jar, and a sheet of watercolor paper to paint on. Because even if watercolor pencils work well on regular papers that are thick and have some tooth, it's going to look far better on watercolor paper. All the supplies I use are linked in the description of the video if you need specific references. So let's grab any watercolor pencil and start scribbling on the paper or the palette. Our goal is to make a swatch of paint. On both paper and palette, it's very easy and fast to do for many colors as you can see from this artwork I worked on recently. The tooth of the paper and the rough side of the special palette is what is going to allow us to collect some pigment from the pencils. Once that's done, all you need to do is to dip a paintbrush in water and go activate your paint. Again, really easy and fast to do. This is what I always start with when I paint something because this awesome watercolor pencil technique is not just for creating a smooth wash of paint that looks beautiful and has no lines underneath from all the scribbling. You can also leverage the fact that you're working from a liquid paint swatch to start painting like watercolors and that's why here I wet the inside of this leaf first with a clean paintbrush and then I went and dropped all my colors one by one. I know people are surprised sometimes to see how much watercolor and watercolor pencils look alike with that technique. The paint spreads really well, colors mix effortlessly and the outcome looks really smooth and dreamy. And because I'm experienced with both watercolors and watercolor pencils, I'll generally keep going while the sheet is still wet. I'll keep adding colors, I overlap them to create a finished background that looks vibrant like that one, or even to set the base for a more complex painting like this one. A tip for you is to start with all the cheap watercolor paper that you might not be using to swatch your colors like I did when I started, and you can even dilute a broken lead in water to create a swatch if that's easier for you. Remember that this technique is best to paint watercolor-like backgrounds and large washes of paint, a quick base layer for a simple or a more complex artwork. The idea really is to use it to block the main colors in and have a base for the rest of the art. Now, the best part is that you could leave it at that if your style is more loose or abstract, or you could push it towards more realism, and this is how I do it. Watercolor pencils can be used like traditional colored pencils, but add water to water-soluble coloring and you could easily end up with a huge muddy mess unless you know the right technique. Before we get to that technique, know that you can start a watercolor pencil painting with just coloring and skip the smooth wash part we just talked about earlier. The reason why I wouldn't recommend it is because it's very time consuming to color. That's why I'll start with coloring when filling a small shape only, like this lantern from the Skillshare class I made recently. And I'll link that for you in the description of the video. Most times I'd suggest to use the swatch technique first if that applies, and once it's completely dry, add a few touches of color through coloring. This is really helpful to get the main subject to pop against a loose background, to touch up some areas of the painting, or just to add more vibrancy. 
and it's very important to do it on a dry sheet. Otherwise, this is what you'll end up with, a very visible and very hard to remove blotch of color. You will also need a pencil sharpener for this step, especially if the areas you want to color are small. For everything else, a blunt lead is okay. And if you don't press too hard, you don't need to be very careful with the coloring. It can be done fast as long as you avoid indenting the paper or making visible lines. And that's why I usually go with circular motions and a light pressure to start. It's important to know that not all watercolor pencils are equal in the way that they feel and look when we color. For example, cheap brands usually feel drier and the colors are not that pigmented. And I've found that the best of the best are the Faber-Castell Albert Durer watercolor pencils, excuse my pronunciation, and the Carandash Museum Aquarelle. They will feel creamy to color with and vibrant once you add water. And then there are other brands in between that are pretty good to color with. And you can see that in my painting, with the Faber-Castell watercolor pencils, the paint really pops up the page with water, even though the base layer doesn't lack in vibrancy. And that comes from the pencil high quality and also from the fact that this technique requires little water, unlike the one that I showed you before. And that really helps with increasing vibrancy. For a little backstory, I couldn't find anything about watercolor pencils online when I started, except for the very basic techniques and I've had to teach myself how to activate pencils properly to avoid a huge muddy mess. And I found out that it's best to work on sections with a slightly wet brush. You don't want it to be dripping wet, it will give you more control. And you want to keep rinsing it between each section or each color change, and that's very important. I also use a paper towel with each new area that I activate because that helps me remove excess water from the brush every time I rinse it and avoid that muddy mess. So remember that if you go over the coloring in one go with water, you will just smear the paint and all the colors will mix up together. And when you have a dark color, that can lead to disaster. I've done it before. It's just awful. So to keep my colors exactly where I want them and make nice gradients, I also start wetting the sheet near the area and I move towards the pigment that needs activated and that avoids a harsh line. And you can see how useful this was for the shadows in the sleeve. If you need more guidance to really get started, I also teach watercolor pencils on Skillshare as I mentioned earlier and the specific beginner leaf painting on Patreon in real time as well as many other watercolor pencil works. So you can check that out in the description. There is more to watercolor pencils than just painting or coloring and activating the pigment. You can also create special effects and that's going to give your paintings a very unique look. And water is going to do wonders for us here and also the pencil leads. For example, there are several ways to leverage leads and water. First, you can color in a wet area and a lot of pigment will come up the lead. It will activate itself right on paper. And this is fantastic to add a strong touch of color, but use that carefully because it's also very hard to remove. You can also get a strong, more opaque and vibrant touch of color by using a wet paintbrush directly on the lead. And I did this here to get paint on my brush and then add texture to the leaf with a splattering technique. Another thing you can do is to dip the lead, try and avoid the wood, in your water jar and use that wet lead to add texture. And I use this technique last in a painting usually, whenever I need to add bright colors in places, usually very small touches. And here you can see it's really effective to paint the dark holes in the leaf. I also like it for highlights with a white watercolor pencil. It really adds to the realism of a watercolor pencil piece and the texture effects really set it apart from other mediums, especially the similar ones like colored pencils or watercolors. I even find that it adds a rustic look to a painting, but maybe that's just me. To benefit from these techniques fully, there are some common watercolor pencil mistakes that you really want to avoid. You can watch this video next to learn about them.
Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.